When it comes to gaming consoles, you hope you can get maybe a handful of games throughout its lifespan that can be considered truly great, go down in history as must plays of that era. And the Nintendo Switch got two games that I feel belong in this category in the same year. Of course, we're talking about Room Into the Night Sky and Mom Hid My Game. That's right, it's time for the ultimate showdown. What happens when perfection battles perfection? No, you dummy, if you would have read the title, even looked at the thumbnail, you would know. We're talking about The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey. As the year begins to wind down, everyone starting to make their, you know, game of the year lists and picks. And either one of those titles would be a shoo-in uh, for at least Nintendo's uh, game of the year if it wasn't for the other one. <laughs> yeah, it's time to choose sides, pit brother against brother. Well, fairy boy versus plumber, I guess. Which game should go down as the game of the year? I want to begin by talking about why I just, I love both of these games. Let's start with the visuals. You know, a lot of people had doubts about the power of the Switch, rightfully so, when it was announced. You know, what kind of games would Nintendo's new hybrid actually be capable of? Well, those fears were quickly alleviated when Breath of the Wild launched. The vast open world of Zelda was breathtaking, for lack of a better word, to be honest. And it made us want to explore every inch in a similar vein, the colorful, cartoony worlds in Mario Odyssey never cease to impress, seeming to get even cooler as you progress through the game. If you've followed me for a while, you know I use the term visually appealing when I talk about my praise for many of Nintendo's games. Most developers these days are concerned with making their games graphically impressive. Everyone's always touting about you know resolutions, realistic characters, etc., etc., but I feel that focus leads to a lot of games looking the same. You know, sometimes kind of generic. Games like Zelda and Mario may not be graphically as impressive as, say, I don't know, an Uncharted game. But again, I find them more visually appealing. They're a joy to feast your eyes on, and time. A lot of time, especially in the case of Zelda. Jeez, how long did we wait for that game? But a lot of time was put into the fine details to make these worlds interesting. Whether it be the characters, the varied areas. You know, something as dumb as how you see the ingredients bounce around when you cook in Breath of the Wild. You can't help but smile as you continuously discover something new. In terms of gameplay, obviously both of these titles do what they do pretty much better than everything else. I mean, the exploration, combat, puzzle solving stuff in Zelda... Uh, the platforming in Mario, I mean, it's it's all outstanding, but there is one thing these games did that a lot of other games don't really do, and uh, they also did it, of course, about as perfectly as you can. And this really fits with the Nintendo Switch's portable options, but, you know, it's something I'd like to see replicated in more games all over the place, and that's making easily digestible, bite-sized content. Sure, you can get lost in these worlds for hours on end, but you can play for even just a couple minutes and feel like you got a lot accomplished. The shrines in Breath of the Wild acted as mini dungeons that you could progress through quickly, and similarly the power moons in Odyssey, which act as the main collectible of the game, are practically everywhere on each map. You won't go far in any direction without discovering one. Maybe it's blocked by you know, some sort of obstacle, there's a puzzle to solve or something but you're constantly coming across them. In each game, no matter how long you play in each session, you feel like you're getting things done, and maintaining that feeling of progression throughout is vital to making a game consistently entertaining and pushing players to press on. Now, in the case of Zelda, this made one aspect kind of suffer, in my opinion. Sorry guys, I've gotta bring it up again. I've prepared myself for a similar backlash as I got when I first started discussing Zelda when it came out, the Divine Beasts, which act as the game's main dungeons, in my opinion, were pretty weak. Now I get it, the focus is more on exploring the main world and completing the shrines, but the beast sections felt kind of tacked on. They didn't feel special, like say, a dungeon in pretty much any previous Zelda game. It's my opinion that 
they probably felt like they couldn't ship a true Zelda game without the classic style dungeon section, so they had to put in something. And that's why there's only four of them, and they're very similar. Like, when you see images from inside each of them, it's, it's, it's hard to even tell which one you're in. Typically, in a Zelda title, I'm rushing to get to the next dungeon. In this one, I was rushing through the beast sections to get back out into the world to do more adventuring. I believe the game might have actually benefited by just taking these sections out and putting more work into the world and the shrines. With the way the Divine Beasts worked uh, in the lore, maybe just sort of have them roaming the world as bosses, giant bosses that you have to take down or something to progress. Again, focusing on the stuff that was already done really well, building some more big areas to explore in the world, maybe add in another major structure to explore like the castle. Now that, you know, my big negative, I guess, with the game is kind of out of the way, I actually liked some of the elements that others didn't, on the other hand. The weapon breaking seemed to frustrate many people, but I thought it added to this very different take on Zelda. To me, this Zelda felt more like a survival game than anything else, with things like the food, the heavy focus on maintaining stamina, monitoring your temperature, not to mention that so many things roaming around the world can kick your ass with ease, especially early on. I love this stuff, and I felt like the weapon breaking just added another element to the survival aspect. It's very reminiscent to my favorite genre of games, survival horror. You have to really think about whether or not you want to engage an enemy and risk just wasting resources. I loved this. Now, Super Mario Odyssey was a bit more reserved in its workings. Sure, the introduction of Cappy really changed a lot of the way the games play with you being able to take over and control enemies. We had the outfits and stuff like that, but the overall design of the game felt like just the next step in what began with games like Super Mario 64. This whole concept of the big levels with all sorts of nooks and crannies to explore and find collectibles in is something very familiar, but it's done in arguably the best it's ever been done before. I've seen plenty of people say that they think this is the best 3D Mario, hell, even the best Mario game ever made. The former I'd, I'd surely be inclined to agree with. I can't really think of anything I don't like about this game. Sure, some sections I may enjoy more than others, but nothing really stands out as bad, at least to me. I feel like I've said Mario has been perfected uh, when talking about multiple past Mario games, so I'd refrain from using the hyperbole once again here and just say this is just yet another improvement on the classic Mario gameplay. But that really brings me to my key point when I compare these two titles. I feel like Breath of the Wild stumbled a bit more compared to Odyssey, but I also feel like it went in a much more bold new direction. Like I said with Odyssey, you can really take it back and see how this built on previous games, like 64, Sunshine, etc. But man, you really can't look at Breath of the Wild and be like, oh, this is just like this Zelda game. It's not. It's way different. And I loved what it did differently. So, to me, that has to play a factor. That they took more of a risk, I think, with Zelda. But you know, Mario also has that universal fun factor. Like, if I, if I take myself out of it, thinking of the general player, one of the things that is so great about something like Odyssey is the simplicity in gameplay combined with the complexity of game design. Like, anyone can play the game, sure. There's plenty of games that are noob-friendly. But games like Mario Odyssey shine because everyone can get engaged and enjoy them. Where Breath of the Wild, it's, it's a bit more advanced, for a casual player, you know, you know, sorry, I'm kind of thinking out loud right now with this. Like, that was supposed to be the build to saying Breath of the Wild was my pick, but... And I'm just thinking now about that aspect of Mario. Okay, we, we don't literally need dead air here with me just thinking about this. I'm sticking with my pick. My pick is actually The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Because, while when I look at both games, I feel like Breath of the Wild probably has more issues but it can be forgiven for the fact that they really tried to do something unique with it. There's nothing wrong with building on what works like Mario did, and yeah, like I said, the cap thing, stuff like that is, there, cool, there are cool new features here that do make it stand out 
from other Mario games. I don't want people being like, oh, it's not just another Mario game. I'm not saying it's just another Mario game. But I'm saying this Mario Odyssey definitely took and built more on past Mario games than I feel like Zelda actually took and built from past Zelda games. Like, I'll say as an aside, if I had to choose between these two and one of them getting a direct sequel, I would choose Breath of the Wild all day. After seeing all this cool new groundwork, I'd love to see how another game would build directly off of this. And hey, maybe with it being a launch game, and kind of having that Twilight Princess vibe with it releasing on both the Switch and the Wii U, maybe we'll get another Zelda game on the Switch that does just that. Sure, of course, I'd love to see another Mario Odyssey as well, but again, having to choose between them, that's the, the theme here, I think Breath of the Wild has opened up more possibilities in terms of where to go with the franchise. But with that, this video's a wrap. Let's cut myself off before I, I change my mind again and go on for another 10 minutes. Of course, let me know which game you think is better. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, your game of the year. But if forced to make a decision, which would you choose, Breath of the Wild or Odyssey? Let me know in the comments. As always, I'm John Zakari, and thanks for watching.